Welcome, friends, to another edition of Rock Peaks. This week, we've got Peter Bjorn and John, Lincoln Park, the Black Eyed Peas, Sly Stone, and the White Stripes. They're back. Sweden's whimsical pop confectionists Peter Bjorn and John have a new record coming out next month, and they previewed a track from it on Conan last Tuesday. Pretty catchy. I like the cowbell sound particularly. The big question, of course, is whether these guys will ever do anything as massively successful as Young Folks, aka the Whistling Song, their huge 2006 hit. And we don't care about the old folks talking about the old statue. And we don't care about our own folks talking about our own stuff. All we care about is talking, talking. tell this week's SNL was going to be all right from the opening moments when host Dana Carvey reunited with Mike Myers for an episode of Wayne's World and then switched into church lady garb and caught a little bit of the Bieber Just fever. Look at him, Jesus, come on! Take a gander! Now if that feels a little retro 80s nostalgia for you, musical guest Linkin Park did a few things we've never seen on SNL before, like mount their own crazy-ass light show on stage, turn the program feed black and white, and put not one, not two, but three drum kits on the stage at the same time. Their latest record, A Thousand Sons, is a bit of a departure for the California metal rap act. Some critics are calling this album their Kid A for its adventurous forays into electronic drum beats and other experimental sounds. We're giving Slash a special versatility award this week for playing the extremes. First, he appeared on what was probably the stinkiest song of the last seven days, a lame cover of Brown Sugar, taped for a third-tier talk show. But then, six days later, he popped up in one of the most watched television events of the year, to lend a little rock and roll credibility to Fergie's rendition of Sweet Child of Mine during the Super Bowl halftime show. Boy, the haters really came out in force for this one, didn't they? Look, we agree, there were sound problems galore during this 12-minute medley. The costumes looked like they were borrowed from the set of Tron. Numbers like Boom Boom Pow were frankly boring. And hey, you know, covering the Dirty Dancing theme song never did anybody's career any good. the time of my life And I never felt this way before And I swear this is true And I owe it all to you, oh, I but hey, there were good moments. The band's descent from the rafters at the beginning was pretty cool. And the kickoff song, I Got a Feeling, really got the crowd going. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night. Tonight's the night! 
Usher's gymnastic leap into the splits fairly rocked. And you gotta give Will I Am props for slipping in a pro-Democrat message in the middle of a Fox television network broadcast during Where is the Love? In America, we need to get things straight. Oh, power, let's get these kids educated. Create jobs so the country stay stimulated. This is dedicated to all the innocent. Raise your hands up, come on! People killing, people dying. Children hurt, and you hear them cry. Would you practice what you you know, initial public opinion on some of these large-scale musical set pieces is usually excessively harsh. Think back to Sly Stone's turn at the Grammys in 2006, when he reluctantly ambled out onto stage to join Will I Am and the members of Aerosmith, wearing a gold lame suit and sporting a giant blonde mohawk. This performance was considered a mess by nearly all who saw it. Most people didn't even think that Sly would show up to his own tribute. But five years on, it's got a certain charm. We particularly like the bit where he abruptly departs the stage, leaving a bunch of bewildered musicians to finish the number without him. Wondered you are great. I'm great. Oh. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> Boom! Right on. Sly's reputation in the 70s for unpredictable behavior was legendary. Here he is being interviewed on the Dick Cavett Show, clearly whacked out of his mind on something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Dick. You're you have great. my entire attention. Hey, Dick. Yeah. You're great. <laughs> but it wasn't always so. Here's a clear-eyed and very together early 80s Sly performing If You Want Me To Stay on The David Letterman Show alongside the world's most dangerous band. There's been a lot of ink spilled this week on the White Stripes calling it quits. We're gonna forego any hand-wringing about what a loss this means for music and just go straight to the music itself circa 2005 at Glastonbury. I'm Barnaby Marshall. We'll be back next week, post-Grammys, with another episode of Rock Peaks.